Hello everyone, my name is Python and welcome back to the 25th episode on the Hermitcraft Season 5 server. Thank you so much. Wait, hang on a minute. Danky! Danky's being harassed! Ha! Ha! I gotta kill him! I gotta kill him! Hey, hey, hey! You there! Stop harassing Danky! There you go, get- oh god, no, alright, well, uh, I'm hoping these guys will just be able to jump out of it. Do you know what I'm gonna do? Boom! Get wrecked! Boom! Get wrecked! Ha! Ha! Don't hit Danky! Ha! Oh, there we go! Ha! 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 Danky, I'm a very nice person, aren't I? Aren't I a good owner keeping you in this hole? <laughs> But guys, thank you very much for joining me for today's episode, and indeed for the support you have been shown for the series, my friends. It is super, super appreciated, as always, guys. If you want to continue seeing Hermitcraft Season 5, and are still hyped for it, do of course be sure to head down below the video. Show some love by dropping a like, right, my friends? It'll be super appreciated. Now, guys, today's fan art comes from a YouTuber by the name of Nicola Draws, and what they decided to do was sketch out my Minecraft character with their Minecraft character in sort of a Minecrafty setting in the background there. I think I can see a jungle in the background there. It's kind of nice. I love the I love the nice art style and the coloring of it. It's just, it's kind of nice and cartoony, which I can really, really appreciate. I really do like it. So, Nicola Draws, thank you so much for that. Now, guys, if you have any fan art that you would like to submit for a chance of yours being used and your name shouted out, do, of course, send them through to my email address, pythonfanart at gmail.com, or you can also send it in through Twitter at pythongb, and yeah, That'll all be good. But anyways, guys, in today's episode, we're going to start off by doing a little bit of decoration work because we need to. Because this place here is looking a bit barren, a little bit bare. We could do with some more greenery, you know what I'm saying. A little bit more in the greens department. Right, so the first thing I want to do, actually, is quickly make sure... Okay, so... We... Did anyone else hear that? I just had a very strange sound indeed. Huh. Huh, maybe it was just me. Anyway, yeah, I want to quickly check out the light levels around this place. So we've got eight. Uh, if we've got any sevens anywhere. Oh, uh, yep, there's a seven right there. So I'm going to put myself another bit of glowstone there. Right, so uh, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, eight. Okay. Uh, yeah, this seems to be good. I might put another one there just because why not? But I just want to make sure that all of the light levels are above seven so no hostile mobs will spawn. And by the looks of it, I think I've just about got it in a nutshell. So guys, let's go ahead and start pretting this place up. I'm, I'm thinking of maybe just turning that into a little bit of a mini hedge or something. Uh, maybe we could do something here as well. Yeah, you know how it goes, guys. We're just going to go ahead and start placing in a whole bunch of stuff. To make this place look a whole lot nicer. You know, it's pretty basic. It's pretty basic. Very, very basic technique I'm using here. Quite simply just randomly and sporadically placing in leaves and hoping in... Hoping in? <laughs> and hoping that they look good, you know? Okay, right. Let's continue on. Uh, hey, false. Come back to the server. Hello, hello. <laughs> uh... Must be uh, re-logging or something. But uh, yeah, guys, guys, things are looking good. But in today's episode, as well as doing this, I would also like to do a little something something involving a certain 1.12 concrete maker, which is designed by my good friend Cubfan, which is going to be pretty cool. It's actually really, really easy to make, like incredibly so. It's incredibly easy to make, and I'm actually kind of looking forward to uh, going ahead and doing that, or making it, should I say. But in the meantime, there we go, guys. Look at that. Yeah, we've got a little thing going on here. I kind of want to get some more flowers in, though, man. Huh. Well, maybe I could just go ahead and grab some flowers and plant them down. That'd be a better idea. Right. So, yeah, this build is looking a lot nicer now, simply for the fact that we have some leaves and some of that going on there now, which is pretty cool. I do still need to work on some of the minor interior details of this place and maybe some exterior details. But in the meantime, guys, what I want to do, what I would like to do is I would like to make a start on this thing. So what we're going to do real quick is we are going to put away some stuff because we have lots and lots of stuff. Oh, boy. Lots of stuff indeed, in fact. Jesus. Right, okay. There we go. And let's get all the chests here. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a funny story. So, uh, well, I wouldn't say it was a funny story, actually. Impulse SV, for those of you guys who don't know, has been trying to achieve 1,000 XP levels. And he's been doing that by AFKing at his Guardian Farm. Now, unfortunately, uh, this happened. Impulse SV was killed trying to hurt Guardian. He was killed 
while AFK. So I put oh dear, but what I went ahead and done after is I went to his base and I kind of figured that because he would be stuck on the death screen, all of his stuff would be loaded in. So as a result, the stuff would despawn. So I just decided to be a good Samaritan, go over there, pick up his stuff and then put it in the chest for him at his base. So impulse, if you're watching, there you go, buddy. Just doing my little bit for the community. <laughs> but uh, yeah, guys, concrete maker. So what we are going to be needing is an observer. Okay, now I'm pretty sure I've got some quartz around this somewhere. Uh, ha! Yes, I do. I do indeed. I need myself some cobble. I need some other stuff. Right, uh, is it, is it two quartz and one redstone? I can never remember. Is it like this? Or is it two redstone, one quartz? Aha! Two redstone, one quartz. I need to try and remember that because, uh, yeah. It's kind of similar to, like, repeaters. It took me a long time to learn how to make those, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, the other thing I need to make is a dropper. There we go, just a, a regular dropper. And do I have any iron left? Yes, I do. I need myself a hopper as well. So let me just go grab out one of those chests. In fact, we're going to need ourselves a decent amount of chests for the storage in this thing. So let's do that. Right. And probably the final thing I'll grab is a bit of obsidian. Now, the design is incredibly simple. Like, to the point where I firmly believe that I could do it all on camera with you guys. And you'll be able to easily follow along with what's going on. Uh, I also need myself... Oh, hey, Ren, dog. Hey, Ren. Hey, buddy. But, uh, yeah, I firmly believe that like, we'll be able to do this all in one go. So, ha! There we go. I need a bit of water. Because, obviously, you know, to turn concrete powder into concrete, you need yourself a water source. So, yeah. Right, so we're going to do it over here. We're going to continue the pathway going over here. But I think we're going to make the little base here. All right, so this is going to be the back of the farm, and all we need to do, I've actually got like a reference picture up to the side of me, so I can actually see exactly what's going on. We are going to be needing to place a chest. That sentence didn't make sense, but hopefully you get what I mean. We're going to place down a double chest there. We're going to place a little thing right there, and what we are going to do next is we are going to hop up over here, and here's where things get interesting. We're going to place the observer rather like this, so we've got the little face facing the hopper right here and what we're going to do now is we are going to place down a bit of redstone here we're going to place down a little bit of stone here we are going to then place the dropper rather like this and then we are going to have a hopper on top of that so this is where the chest which feeds the concrete powder to us that's where it's going to go and next what we're going to do is we're going to place down a stair block rather like that we are going to grab ourselves a wooden trapdoor rather like that and then we can actually place in the water source right now so here we go so this is like legit the entire farm it actually is i'm not even kidding guys i'm not even kidding although this block here needs to be replaced with something that's very hard to break or something that you don't break with a pickaxe so a piece of wood as per cubs tutorial or maybe a bit of obsidian again as per cubs tutorial will both do the job so believe it or not guys that is entirely it that is that's literally all you need to do <laughs> It's so simple, isn't it? That is so, so simple. I'm actually really surprised with just how easy that was to do. Okay, so what we need to do, believe it or not, we need to come over here. We're going to place one stack in there. And then this stack that we have here, we are going to place in this hand. And basically, what you got to do is you got to hold both clicks at the same time. So, or is it the other way around? So, this. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, maybe it is this way. Huh, that's, that's weird. Huh. Ah, there we go. Yeah, we got it. Guys, this is how you do it. This is literally how you do it. It is the simplest farm you can come up with. And what it's going to do for me is it's going to, like, really speed up just how quick I'll be able to get myself solid concrete blocks. And then basically what happens is, you know, with all of them being generated, they fall into here, and then the blocks go in there. Obviously, we'll get some in your inventory just because of how they drop. But uh, that's that's literally all there is to it. That really is literally all there is to it. So basically, as you're dispensing the concrete and breaking it, the observer is going to send out a pulse going into the dropper, which is going to give you another bit of concrete powder, and then you can basically just continue on. So let's put this back in my offhand, and then all you got to do is hold down both clicks at the same time. Now, there is a small trick, rather similar to AFK Fish Farms. There's a small trick you can use to, you know, make sure the click is still on, even if you're not technically playing the game or have the window active but you know it's kind of cool it's kind of cool we've got ourselves a farm here guys <laughs> 
Awesome! Right, now obviously I need to decorate this up and uh, make it look like it belongs in this place. So I think we'll do that next. But in the meantime, I'm going to get some concrete. <laughs> Hey, there we go guys. How about that? That's looking a bit better now, isn't it? Okay, I uh, just need to finish off the roof and then the build will pretty much be there. Uh, I just need to put this back. Okay, and then I need to place these back in place. Rather like that. We need to place this back in place. Fantastic. And yeah, we just need to do the roof now. So let's just head up here. Aha, nice one. Now as far as I remember, this should still open, right? Let's just test that out. It does. Okay, it does still open. Fantastic. I had a slight feeling that they might have changed that at some point, but apparently not. I'm actually kind of happy about that. <laughs> Sweet! Although, maybe we could put like a thing up here? Just a little bit of light? Yeah, why not? Okay, how's the light levels looking in here? It's looking a bit drab, a little bit dreary. Maybe what we do is place down one of them up there as well. Yeah, not bad, not bad. So yeah, that's the concrete maker, guys. Completely finished. Didn't take very long, did it? Really did not take very long at all. Right, let me just uh, make sure everything is still working. So if I, for example, put that in there. And then I do this. Or it goes in there. Huh. Oh, that's right. It's because I haven't placed anything. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Everything is good. Everything is good, guys. The thing is still working, and we've got ourselves a concrete maker, guys. <laughs> Fantastic. So that means I can get myself a whole crap ton of concrete powder, and then just AFK while I uh, while I dig up concrete. Mate, I'm actually really happy about that. Thank you, Cub fan. I appreciate the design, buddy. <laughs> Alright guys, so the next thing I want to do in this episode is I would actually like to fully upgrade my elytra. As you can see, they are not looking so hot right now. I don't have any unbreaking books, I don't have any mending books. Which means I'm going to be trekking out to Cub Fan's place. He has been openly offering the ability to uh, trade with his villagers and get a mending book. So I will be taking him up on that offer. But in addition to that, we need to get an unbreaking book. And do you want to know something awesome guys? Up here in the villager breeder, we've actually got a pretty damn cool librarian. Let's check this guy out. So 30 paper trade, pretty bad considering you can get 24 as the cheapest one. But if we move along, for 13 emeralds, we can have an infinity book, which is kind of nice. We've got the cheapest of the bookshelf trades, which is kind of nice. And then moving on, for 20 emeralds, we can have an unbreaking 3 book. There it is, guys. What's the third trade? Fire aspect. But yeah, guys, we got Unbreaking Villager here. He's, like, really, really valuable. So we're actually going to go ahead and take him up on his offer there. So, hey, buddy, I am going to have an Unbreaking book from you, please, sir. The other book I've got here is going to be, of course, for the Mending book. So let's go buy you. Ha! <laughs> So yeah, I do still have the end goal of this entire villager breeder to try and get a mending villager of my own. That would be really, really nice. Like, for real, it would be really, really nice. Oh, jeez. Oh, God! Oh, okay, I'm freaking out a little bit. <laughs> oh, the movement. Oh, it's so janky how you move through sometimes. Like, move through blocks sometimes. But anyways, guys, we're going to head down here real quick. We are going to go ahead and we're going to go through the nether. Uh, oh, hello. What are you? What? What are you? What, what are you doing, sir? Mom, thing, dude, mom, get out of it! Go on, get wrecked. There you go, fantastic. All right, let's head through the Nether. Let's get to Cub's place. All right, guys. So I've just gone through the portal here, and here we are at Cub's amazing island of technical prowess. Oh, man. So for those of you guys who don't know CubFan135, he is an amazing technical redstone technical player of awesomeness. He's got a whole bunch of amazing farms here. I imagine this is this is just a little micro farm, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, uh, I, I, I shot a ghast on the way, and I got a ghast head. Yeah. Yeah. That's a thing. Actually, I'll tell you what, that brings me on to the comic question of the video, which is from Nathan Cook. Python, I was wondering if you are going to try and get some of the mob heads on the server. If you are, you should probably start with the sheep ones. Absolutely. I, I've already got a little collection of heads going on. I've got a chicken head, spider heads, obviously, from the spider farm. I've got squid heads. I've got villager zombie heads. And in addition to that, I now have a ghast head. Which, I've got to be honest, I was not expecting to get. I don't know what the rarity level of these guys are. I know there's different rarity levels for each of the different kinds of heads, depending on how rarely they spawn. So, I imagine with ghasts, because they're like semi-rare, maybe the drop chances be buffed a bit. I don't know the exact mathematics behind it, but, you know, we got a ghast head. I'm feeling pretty good about that. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, like I said, Cub Fan is an, is an amazing technical player. I highly advise you go ahead and check him out if you want some technical redstone-y type videos. Like, look at this! Look at all this stuff, man. So not only does he have an excellent villager breeder and obviously a villager trading hall just over here, but what is the is this a is this a sugarcane? Yeah, it is. It's a sugarcane tower. It's the it's the two towers of sugarcane. Oh my word. Okay, so yeah, let's head over here and we are looking for a mending villager. So, uh, mending for thirty emeralds. Okay, that's not too bad. So for those of you, oh hello, so, yeah. Uh, 34 emeralds for this one. So for those of you guys who don't know, at the very end of Season 4 Hermitcraft, I actually managed to obtain a librarian villager who sold a mending book for, get this, and I'm not kidding at all when I say it, 10 emeralds. 10 emeralds granted me a mending book. 30 emeralds seems like a massive ripoff in comparison, but you know what? It's a mending book I want, and it's a mending book I'm going to get, you know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and uh, do the old tradey, tradey, tradey. Uh, ha! Right, uh, looting... Uh, ha! There we go. Let's have a little bit of this. Aha! There we go! So now, do I have an anvil in here? Uh, no. Nor can I make one. Oh, gosh darn it. So we're gonna need to make a trek all the way back. So we can, so we can do this thing. Unless there, oh, there's anvils here. <laughs> oh my god! So apparently, I can't see what's right in front of me, guys! That's fantastic! <laughs> oh man, alright, oh, you know what, sometimes I'm the stupidest person in the world. Right, here we go, so we got unbreaking, and there's the mending, and you know what, pythons, wings, there we go, fan dabatastic. So all we need to do is we need to go ahead and AFK, that's our penta spawner for a little bit, so we can go ahead and repair this thing, and yeah, all will be good to go, my friends, all will be good to go. So, let's head back to our base, and let's get some AFKing done at the penta spawner. Ha! <laughs> ha! Hey guys, look at that! Look at that! Over there in the distance! Wait, hang on a minute! I always thought that if you were 30 or more blocks away from villagers, they wouldn't move. Yet, those guys clearly are. And I'm more than 30 blocks away. Like, this is about 50 blocks away. Why are those guys freaking out? That's really weird. I'm gonna have to investigate that in a minute. But in the meantime, I am going to go ahead and do a little bit of this. Because I need to get my, uh, I need to get my elytra back in the get- Oh, look at that! Look how quick it replenishes it! That's amazing. Okay, let's try out the- Oh, wow. So, because these guys have armor, they're gonna give me more XP. Uh, yep, yeah, as you can see, the XP bar filling up nicely. Oh, they're done. That's it. Woo! I got my elytra back, boys! Oh my word, it is at long last. It's about time, right? It's about time I got myself some mending, on baking, freaking elytra. I'm pretty happy about that. Dude, seriously, what are you guys all freaking out about? I, I I don't get it. I I don't think I get it like at all. Huh? Hey, I don't know what's going on here, man. But uh, I, I'm slightly concerned to say the least. Uh, librarian punch, uh, aquafinity looting. Okay, I think I've already uh, seen this stuff. Toolsmith, I'm breaking two. Hey, man, it'd be nice if I had like a, a silk touch trading dude. But, eh, doesn't matter too much. Right, now then, uh, I think the next thing I would like to try and do, ladies and gentlemen, is I would like to install a bunch of little sort of pin prick skylight type things. So basically, I'm going to have like, an, like, a, like a grid of holes in the roof that go all the way up to the surface. Because for those of you guys who don't know, these guys require direct sunlight in order for them to officially class this entire place as a town slash village. And therefore they can roam about a bit better, go in the doors, go in all the buildings, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, all will be good. Now, I need to do a tiny bit of research in terms of how much space it will provide, like each bit of glass. And then from there, I'll be able to figure out some sort of grid pattern that will allow this place to be officially classed as a village. So, give me a little bit. I'm going to research the villager mechanics just a little bit and then uh, we'll get to work on making some little skylights. Alright guys, so after doing a little bit of research, I've got this little snippet from the wiki. A valid door is any door within the village radius where the number of outside spaces within five blocks in a straight line on one side of the door is not the same as the number of outside spaces within five blocks of the other side of the door. So yeah, a space is considered outside if it has nothing but transparent blocks above it all the way to the sky. So in a nutshell, let's just try and uh, represent this. So we've got this place here. This is going to be the area going all the way up to the sky, okay? And basically what this is going to do 
is it's going to make it so one, two, three, four, five. All of the blocks here are considered outside. So from there, and then one, two, three, four, five, there, one, two, three, four, five, there. So all blocks within this sort of square, this bigger square, they're all going to be considered as outside if we have that little pinprick sort of skylight up to the ceiling. So yeah, I don't think we're going to be needing many skylights, nowhere near as many as I thought I would need anyway. So eh, all I need to do is I need to try and figure out how to evenly space all of these skylights in the ceiling, which is probably going to be more difficult than I feel like it will be, but I don't know. Maybe all I need to do is like go over here and then take down coordinates and then just try and calculate things, I guess. Go up to the, go up to the like sky or something. I don't know. We, we need to go on the surface and try and figure this out real quick. So yeah, give me a sec guys. I'm going to do some technical mathematic stuff and yeah, I'll see what I can do. Okay, I didn't quite realize there was going to be a skeleton spawner down here. So I'm actually digging down one of the uh, corner parts of the uh, of the little project we're doing here with the skylights. And uh, yeah, there's a skeleton spawner right there. Interesting. And a bunch of iron. We've actually been running really short on iron, so I am pretty happy about finding that. Uh, what is going on here? Huh. There is weird things going on. Right, well, anyways, let's go ahead and have a look at this. Uh, rotten flesh. String will be useful. Coal will be useful. Horse armor, maybe. I don't know. Record disc. I mean, we're going to have parrots very, very shortly because 1.12 is going to be out imminently. Uh, melon seeds. Rotten flesh. We'll take a bucket. We'll take the gold apple. We'll take this record disc and we'll take this bit of string as well. Fantastic. And just for the sake of doing it, I'll take the down the cords of that place as well. Hey, man. That's pretty darn cool. All right, let's carry on. Hey, so here we go guys. I think I've got the distribution thing set up quite nicely in that there are eight blocks in between each of the skylights here. And I've almost managed to get them distributed perfectly apart from when it comes to the center here where it's actually seven blocks wide. Now I went for eight blocks in between as opposed to ten blocks in between because I have bad feelings that ten blocks, like, I don't know. I don't know whether it counts the skylight as a block in the radius or not. So... Yeah, that's why I'm going for 8 blocks as opposed to 10. So, let's go ahead and let's just get this thing done, I guess. We're just going to go... Oh, hello. Ooh. Hello. We need to go ahead and uh, rectify that, don't we? There's a, there's a, there's a zombie. And, he, and he's dead now. <laughs> Lol. Yes. Yes, we need to go ahead and, uh, yeah, we need to make sure that everything's lit up, huh? Alright, guys. Let's get on with this thing. And, yeah, when we bring you guys back, this place will be nicely lit by the sunlight. What? Oh, man. Ah, oh, where did that guy come from? <laughs> oh, no. All right, well, we got a very limited amount of time before those guys despawn. Oh, what the heck, dude? All right, here we go. <laughs> what? Oh, I can't believe it, man. One of my creeper brothers somehow got in on the ground here. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. What a guy. What a guy. And I mean that in a negative fashion as well. How dare he? <laughs> ah, well that would explain it. They're probably spawning on this little platform here, huh? You little buggers. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, that's another creeper explosion. Really? I'm trying to do technical stuff here, man. Jeez, dude. <laughs> all right, guys. Look at all that daylight coming in through the little pinprick skylights now. This is pretty cool, actually. I'm rather enjoying being able to see the wall and all of its discrepancies. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff to be done here, my friends, but what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to end the episode here, but I think later today I'll do a live stream of me finishing off this mini project here. Going ahead, getting the mini skylights in, and then maybe also in the stream we'll go ahead and work a bit more on the walls. Now, guys, if you enjoyed this episode today, do be sure to drop a like rating. It'll be super appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on future content, and that will wrap it up for today. In the meantime, I'm going to become a villager and just roam around aimlessly with Without any kind of meaning. 
Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Alright, guys. I am going to go ahead and play with my villager brethren. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I appreciate your continued support. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.